Hi, welcome to this video where I talk about converting my drivetrain from my conventional lubricant to a paraffin wax lubricant. In this video, I'm going to talk about the advantages of using paraffin wax. I'm going to talk about the steps involved in converting to paraffin wax. And finally, I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the materials and, su and supplies that you might find useful if you wanted to do this conversion yourself. So first of all, what are the advantages of using um, paraffin wax uh, on your drivetrain? Well, first of all, it's extremely low friction, much lower than conventional lubrication systems. Please don't take my word for it. If you get an opportunity, you can visit frictionfacts.com and read about a comparative analysis where they looked at 50 chain lubricants, paraffin wax being one of them, and you can see that paraffin wax performed much better than most of the other chain lubricants out there. Second of all, paraffin wax is an extremely clean lubricant. You'll find that once you apply this to your chain, um, you won't have any of the uh, grime and um, uh, dirt buildup on your chain that you're used to seeing with conventional lubricants. <clears throat> Finally, it's really long lasting. I've found that I don't have to apply the paraffin wax to the chain as frequently as I would ordinarily apply a conventional uh, chain lubricant. Now the steps involved, um, there's only two. The, the first one is you want to do a thorough cleaning of your drivetrain. And of course the second step is applying the paraffin wax to your chain. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the first step here, the cleaning. As you can see, I have most of my drivetrain components out here, with the exception of my idler pulleys, which are still on my bike and I've already cleaned very thoroughly. I went ahead and took my chain rings off my bike because it was easier to do a really thorough job of cleaning them. I haven't yet cleaned my cassette or my chain. For that, I'm going to use an ultrasonic cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaners are great at getting into the nooks and the crannies um, of these types of components and cleaning them more thoroughly than you can clean them just by, uh, just by hand. Um, I'll provide a link in the description of this video um, to a comparable um, ultrasonic cleaner as the one I have here. So the ultrasonic cleaner um, uses water and degreaser. I happen to use um, this Simple Green heavy duty degreaser and I mix it with water, um, usually about um, one part uh, degreaser to five parts water, or even more diluted than that. It doesn't have to be um, that concentrated. Now this ultrasonic cleaner is a heated unit. If, uh, if the fluid is not heated, the ultrasonic cleaner doesn't do as good of a job. So this is not quite up to temperature yet. Um, when it is up to temperature, I think it's around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius, um, but it's good enough to get started. So I'm going to start off with the chain and then I'm going to add the uh, cassette later just because I want to, I'm going to try and do a close up shot uh, of the chain in here and you'll be able to see some of the grease coming off of it. Now this chain is already pretty clean because before I shot this video, um, I accidentally put the chain in there for about a minute before I realized that I wanted to capture it on video. So it's already had about a minute's worth of cleaning. Hopefully there's still enough grime on there that we'll be able to see it in the video. I don't know if it's showing up in the video very well, but I can definitely tell that there is some um, dirt and grime that is being expelled from the chain as the ultrasonic cleaner is running. Now that's going to run for about five minutes and I'm also going to put my cassette in there and uh, we'll come back after it has had time to, uh, time to clean. Welcome back. I have just removed uh, my cassette and chain from the ultrasonic cleaner um, after a five minute cleaning. And I haven't really touched any of the parts um, except to set this part up here. And I'm not sure if this is going to show up very well in the video, 
Um, hopefully it does show up, but these parts are absolutely pristine. And as I do a, more of a close-up of these um, larger rings back here, um, you're going to notice that there's a little bit of grease on a few of the teeth. And those were the teeth that were not immersed in the fluid. So the teeth, you can compare that with the teeth that was immersed in the fluid. And the ones that were immersed are, are absolute, look, it looks brand new. Um, and that's without any scrubbing whatsoever. So you can tell it do, does a fairly good job. Now this cassette was fairly clean to begin with, but I've done this many times on much dirtier cassettes and the results um, are comparable. I'm basically finished with the cleaning step, but before I move on to applying the paraffin wax onto the chain, I did want to mention a couple of things. First of all, of all of the parts that I put into the ultrasonic cleaner, I was careful not to put any anodized aluminum um, that I cared about getting potentially discolored. This little ring here, for example, is anodized aluminum. Um, and I did not put that in the ultrasonic cleaner. It would have been fine, but there have been occasions where um, anodized aluminum can get discolored in the ultrasonic cleaner. This is some ultra um, anodized aluminum right here on this inner part. Um, and of course I didn't really care whether or not that got discolored. Um, the second thing I wanted to let you know is that um, although the ultrasonic cleaner wasn't up to temperature, it did make it to about 55 degrees Celsius, uh, which is, is plenty fine. I just uh, was impatient and didn't want to wait for it to get all the way up to temperature. Um, but as you can see, it did a great job um, nonetheless. Moving on now to the application of the paraffin wax onto the chain, which incidentally is fully dried. In order to apply the paraffin wax onto the chain, it needs to be melted. I've found that the easiest way to melt paraffin wax is with a crock pot. If you're tempted to melt paraffin wax on your stove, you shouldn't. The stove can get too hot and the paraffin wax can catch fire. As you can see, most of the paraffin wax is already melted but it's sufficient for me to get started anyway. I picked up this crock pot at Walmart for about $5. That's also where I picked up my paraffin wax. In order to put the chain uh, into the crock pot, you can just do that by hand. Getting it out is a little more tricky. I use a little hook tool. Once I put the chain into the crock pot, I'm going to let it sit there for about five minutes and I'm going to agitate it a little bit just so that the paraffin wax can get good penetration um, into and around the pins. Now that the chain is in the crock pot, you may be able to notice that there's some bubbles coming out of the pins in the chain. That's good. That means that the paraffin wax is penetrating into the chain. If I agitate the chain a little bit, you can see more bubbles. I'm going to leave that chain in there for about five or ten minutes. It's just about time for me to remove this chain from the crock pot. It's extremely hot, so what I'm going to do is remove it with this hook. And I'm going to set it here on these paper towels. And I'm going to let it cool off for about 30 seconds. Not long enough to um, let the wax harden, but long enough to bring it down a few degrees. Then I'm going to pick it up with this, um, with this rag so it doesn't burn my hands. I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to fling it around my head a few times to get most of the excess wax off the chain. Then I'll bring it back and let it cool all the way. Once your chain is thoroughly dry and you begin handling it, you're going to notice that it feels a little bit crusty. This is from the excess wax that you weren't able to fling off when you took the chain outside. This excess wax will flake off in the first few minutes of riding your bike once you get the chain on the bike. Once you put your paraffin wax coated chain back on your bike, you'll notice smooth, quiet shifting and a pristine drivetrain that doesn't get dirty over time. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I hope you've liked this video, and if so, please like or subscribe.